Hey, welcome back. My name is Matthew. Today we are starting a short video series introducing ggplot. So if you're getting bored with uh, the graphics that you get out of plot and you're looking to spice things up a bit, then you should be looking into ggplot. So first of all, if you haven't used it before, you're going to have to install it. So you can do that with install packages ggplot2. So you just have to run that. Now, I already have it installed, but uh, that's fine. It's still going to compile. All right, once you've installed ggplot, you can include it inside of a script with library ggplot2. And uh, just a quick shortcut that you may not be aware of. If you have your cursor on a line of text, you can hold down control and press enter, and that will run that line of text. All right, so we've included ggplot2. Now we're going to use some data that comes with ggplot2, just so that we don't have to worry about loading files or anything like that. But if you have your own data that you want to uh, follow along with, you can just load that in. So if you want to see what's inside of a package, an easy way to do that is to type the package then double colon, and you can see here all of the functions, all of the data is in a nice list. Now we are going to be looking at msleep, so let's just store that into sleep. There we go. So you can see over here in our global environment we now have sleep that has 83 observations of 11 variables. If you want to have a look at that, it's very, very easy. You can just say head sleep, and that'll show the top couple of entries. And you can see here all of the column names. So now we know what variables we have to work with. As well, it can be useful, especially if you're using your own data, to check to see if there are any missing values or anything like that. And you can do that pretty easily with summary. So you can see here we ran summary sleep and it just tells us a little bit about each of the columns. Sleep rem has missing values so you would want to be careful of that and uh, make sure that there is, uh, if this is your own data, that these NAs are supposed to be there and not that your data is incomplete. All right, so very basic ggplot. So you can call ggplot, it sets up a plot object. And with ggplot, you use plus to add layers. Now we're going to tell ggplot what data we're using. Oh, a convenient thing that you can do if you have a function and you want to know what it takes is just put your cursor inside of the braces and press tab and you can see all of the things that you can put into it. So we want to set the data to be sleep. Now in ggplot, the, a lot of the layers that you want to use start with geom. So we're going to try out geom point. And you have to give it aesthetics. So AES are the aesthetics. Now for G on point, the aesthetics are just X and Y. So these are the X and Y coordinates that are going to get plotted. So let's give our X variable, which is going to be along the bottom of the plot. Let's give that our sleep total. Now we're putting here one of the column names. So all of the data in that column is going to get plotted on the X axis. Pressing tab again, we see we've used X, so X is no longer showing up in the list, but we want to assign Y. So let's see how sleep total compares to brain weight. All you have to do is run this, and you can see here that we have a ggplot of brain weight versus sleep total. You can see that there are a few observations that are going way out here. So it might be nice to look at log of brain weight instead of brain weight. So we are going to modify this ggplot call. 
and we're just going to add a transformation. So now our y-axis will be the log of brain weights rather than brain weights. Control enter to run it again. And you can see here it's updated the axis, so log brain weight. And this is much nicer to look at. You can see that there seems to be a roughly linear relationship with a fair bit of variability along that imaginary line. So far, these plots have been a little bit boring. Uh, it's time to spice things up a little bit. So let's suppose that you want to use one of these variables and represent it by color in the plot. So that's very easy to do inside of AES or your aesthetics. You just want to add color equals, and you can use any of your variables, although factors work better because using a using continuous variables, you're going to get continuous change in color, and that's usually pretty hard to see on a plot. But with with the certain types of data, that can also be useful. So let's try using order as color. So you can see order has been added to the legend and it's given colors to each of the orders, and you can see them on the plot. Here it's hard to tell if order is important, just because we have so many colors and they're all plotting in this one area, but you can very easily tell ggplot to split your data into multiple mini plots. So one way to do that is with facet. So you can do a grid or you can do a wrap. They work in similar ways, but uh, for this, we'll use a wrap tab to see what it takes. Now we're going to use facets and you can see here that you give it a formula. So tilde and then column name, and you can have as many as you want. All that means is you'll get more mini plots. We're just going to use one here. So tilde, and we are going to do it by vor. So vor is carnivore, herbivore, etc. So now you can see that we've split it up. We've got our carnivores here, our herbivores here, our insectivores, our omnivores, and NAs are the unlabeled ones. We don't know what they eat, or maybe they're a strange combination. Well, now we've got a decent plot, shows a lot of information, makes use of color and faceting, but not too happy with the labels, and we don't have a title yet. So adding those is very easy. You just add an extra layer with the plus sign. And we're going to add a Y label and an X label and a GG title. Now these all work the same way. You just give them any string and it will put them on there. So our Y label is the logarithm of brain weight in kilograms. Our X label is daily sleep measured in hours relationship between brain weight and sleep by diet so we can just run this again and there you have it we have our new title up here we have our new labels here and the plot is done so I hope this uh, has been helpful. We just covered a few of the basics of ggplot, and of course we only looked at g on point, but there are many, many more to look at. So I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.